Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Barry Beckham and what we're going to do this month is take a look at how we can apply filter effects to create something a bit different to what we normally see when people apply filters through Photoshop or Photoshop Elements. Now you may be thinking why do I need a tutorial to teach me how to apply a filter? In Photoshop or Photoshop Elements all we need to do is go to the top of the screen select the filter menu, go down and select the filter we require, maybe one of the artistic filters, choose the filter, apply some parameters and there we have the end result. Nothing difficult at all in doing that and it works a treat. The filter effect you're going to achieve though is going to be the same as millions of other people and it loses some appeal when we see the same filters used over and over again. I think filters become more charming when we add a little bit of our own creativity into the mix too and that's what I hope to achieve here. Now the image we have here lacks a little bit of appeal and charm. Now that's down to the lighting conditions up to a point but when we add the filter effect what I'm hoping to do is add the charm too and that's I think what we need to try to achieve with our filters an improvement in the image not just applying a filter because the filter happens to be in our filter drawer. The other thing we need to think about with the images we're going to filter is the size of those images both the physical size in inches and also the resolution but why do we need to consider that? Now the filters that we apply to our images work on the pixels within the image and what we can find is as the pixel value of our images grows and grows with more and more powerful cameras then the effect of the filter can actually be lost. We can actually have too much resolution to get the filter effect that we require. So the first thing we need to consider is what we want to do with this image and the reason I need to ask that question because we're going to need to make this image the size we're going to intend to present it. Now if we're going to present it electronically on a computer only, maybe in a slideshow, that's one size. Let's assume in this instance though we're going to produce an image which is around A3 size. It would be no good creating my filter effect with this high resolution picture and reducing the image to A3 size just before I print it because then I'm going to get a change in the way the filter effect appears. So what I think is the best thing to do is to decide on the output size at this stage and make our changes and that's exactly what I'm going to do first. So let's set up the size of the image by going to image at the top of the screen and image size. Now there's two things we do in the image size box. We either untick the resample image box if we're resizing an image for print purposes which keeps all of the pixels in there. But this is an exception because we're moving from a photographic quality image to a piece of art we actually don't want all of that resolution so I'm going to reduce that too. So I'm going to tick to resample the image. I'm going to change my measurement from centimeters to inches because I'm going to reduce the resolution by half. There you can see we've got 240 pixels. I'm going to reduce that to 120 and we'll make the width of our image 16 inches so we can actually get a 16 by 12 or we can get the image on a 16 12 sheet of paper or A3. So I'm going to click OK to make that change. We'll see a slight jump in the image once that resizing has occurred and I can hit Control 0 to fit the image back on screen. Now we can take a look at brightening the image up a bit before we start the filtering process. Now the first thing I can see in the sky here is either an enormous piece of dust that's settled on the chip of my camera but I suspect it's a seagull flying overhead so with the zoom tool selected I'm just going to zoom in you can see the shape of the bird side on I'm going to pick up my clone tool and adjust the brush size using the square bracket keys on the keyboard and just clone away that bird we don't want that in the sky at all. Control 0 will set the image back full screen. 
So let's brighten this image up using the Levels command and probably the Hue and Saturation as well. So I'm going to go to the top of the screen and choose Image, Adjustment, Levels. Control L is the shortcut key. And what I'm going to do here is move that slider over to the right in towards the left and you can see we're getting a little bit of a change. It's difficult for you to see. Let me move that panel over to the right a little bit and I can hit the preview button and you can see the difference but what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to move the center slider and just lift the tones a little bit it's not critical what we're doing here because we're not going to end up with a photographic quality image so some of the restrictions we may have when we're working on photo quality images can be stretched quite a bit when we intend to filter the image so what I'm going to do here then is to click OK to create that initial change and then I need to open up my hue and saturation because I'd like to push some nice bright color into the image. Now we can find the hue and saturation in a similar place to the levels so image adjustment and hue and saturation. Control U is the shortcut keys for this palette and what I'm going to do here is add quite a bit of color to the image probably far more than I would ever add if I was creating a photo quality image. Let me move this hue and saturation palette off the screen quite a bit so you can see what I'm trying to achieve here and you can see the color I've added. If I tick the preview box on and off which is just off the screen at the moment you can see the difference we're making to the image and we've got quite a bit of bright color there and I'm going to click OK to accept that. So before we even think about applying any filters, we're laying the groundwork, so to speak. And I would say out of the three things we've done, resizing the image, adjusting the levels and the color, probably the most critical is adjusting the size. Now we're going to create here a piece of art from a photographic image. So what we do in preparation sometimes doesn't have a great deal of bearing to what we would ever do with a photographic subject. So bear with me as we go through the next part of the tutorial where I'm going to add some blue to the colour of the sky because it's a little bit wishy-washy, particularly over to the right hand side. So to begin the process I'm going to pick up the eyedropper tool and I'm going to click to select a colour from the sky. I'm going up to the far left because that's the darkest blue I can see. There you can see the blue that I've chosen but I want something a bit more bluer than that, something with a bit more impact. So I'm going to click the color picker and I can move the selection ring from its current position more to the right and a little downwards so I get a much more colorful blue and a darker blue and I'm going to accept that. Now I need a brush to apply this blue color and if I select my brush I'm going to need a special effects brush I think to add some color so if we go to the options at the top of the screen and click that little down arrow the brush options appear and I'm going to go to the top right little black triangle and click there too and I'm going to go down and select my thick heavy brushes now when this panel appears OK means that we want to replace the brushes we currently have with the thick heavy brushes. Append means we want to add those brushes to the ones that are already there. So on this occasion I'll click Append. If I drag out the palette a little bit more you'll see the thick heavy brushes. There's only five of them and the one we're interested in is the one in the middle. So I'm going to pick up the brush which has got the label 100. Now if I go up to the top right you may be just be able to see the brush in the right hand sky. 